Zero accounting software. Accounts payable graphs. Get ready to be an office hero with zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in opening the demo company but doing so with the reset button which will open the demo and reset the data at the same time we're going to be duplicating some tabs so we can put our reports in them as we have done every time right click in the tab up top to do so duplicating it right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again yes that's a double duplication back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down we want the balance sheet tab to the right as it is thinking and accounting drop down this time the income statement the p the l the profit the loss back to the tab to the left it's still thinking how long do you need i'm going to hit it again on the balance sheet and then we're going to change the date up top we want to go to the custom and 2022 31 that's the setup process that we've been doing every time we've been now looking at other reports that uh, can feed into will generally give some expansion upon one or multiple line items on these major financial statement reports now we're thinking about pictorial presentations such as graphs now we know that zero has some nice kind of built-in uh, pictorial representations of the data for internal use but oftentimes if we're going to use it for external reporting purposes we might want to make our own stuff which we can do with Excel. So we talked about last time, we could do that with the asset breakout, for example, we might take the, the balance sheet itself and then make a pie chart of where we have our, our uh, accounts on the assets. And we also did it last time with the accounts receivable broken out by customer. Now we're gonna do the accounts payable broken out by vendor just to show some examples. We might then move to the income statement and look at things like sales by customer, possibly a pie chart or something like that, or a, another kind of chart, a, a bar chart or something. Sales by item, what we sold are gonna be common things. You could, you know, you could break your expenses out by pie chart or by bar chart to, to show the expenses that you have uh, categorized as well in a pictorial fashion that could look nice. So I'm gonna right click on the tab up top, duplicate the tab to get the data we need to make the graphs accounting drop down reports now again zero has these nice financial performance reports we talked about last time some of these like the analytics business snapshot have some little kind of graphs built in but those are mainly for internal use they're not so much for the outlaw that you could you know use them for external use but if you wanted to make you know your own graphs for particular things you can pull the data and then just export it to excel and you have a whole lot more flexibility just to take a look at that as we're doing this if i go into one of these items they got these little you know charts that give you the data but there's not much you could do to this chart to kind of adjust what you want to do other than adjust the date these are built-in settings for it if you export something to excel then of course you could do you can make any kind of pictorial chart you want with it right so it's it's useful to know to do that with not just accounting software not just zero but any kind of database program so let's take a look at the accounts payable this time we'll do a similar process we did with the receivables let's look at the ap uh summary right there that's the one and let's take it to the end of december take it to the end there update it and so now we've got our information here broken out by who we owe the money to it's got your date ranges up top how old they are but then we're really focused in on the totals at least to start out which is a nice little format 
for a pie chart, right? We've got it broken out by customer and a total down below. That's a good data set to make a pie chart out of. So let's do it then, let's do that. Because we could put that into our package and present it to our customers and stuff and they might think the colors are pretty. And so they'll give us a raise or something, I don't know. So let's open this up. Pie charts are nice. Add a splash of color to the whole reporting process. So there it is, that's not it, there it is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this data and pull it into our reports that we've been working with before. So I put these reports in a prior presentation. If you don't have this on your end, that's okay. If you haven't been following along or whatever, but I'm just gonna put it on here to show how we can add this to like our standard reports. So I'm just gonna say, this is my data tab. This is the AP data tab. And I'll pull this information. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing putting my cursor on the triangle, control C or right click and copy, and then put that up here, either in A1 or select in the whole sheet, control V or right click and paste. And then I'm gonna zoom in a bit, zoom in thusly. Now I might wanna keep this as my OG data. So this might be AP, I might call this rather, what did I do, did I copy it over? I might double click on this and call it uh, APOG data and then separate that from my my second data tab that I'll manipulate. So I'm going to copy this whole thing over now, holding control, left clicking, dragging to the right. So now I have a copy of this. I'm going to call this my AP data tab that I'm going to manipulate now. So I'm going to adjust it by, I don't need the title. I'm just gonna trim it down to what do I need? What do I need? All I need is this, this column here and this column here, basically, that's all I want. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna scroll, let's scroll in a bit so it's easier to see. These headers I don't need. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the one here, left click, drag down to the five, and then let go, right click and delete. And I don't need like this added column here, a row, these are rows, not columns. I don't need that. And I don't need the number two here either. So I'll put my cursor on two, dragging down to three, right click and delete. And then you gotta be a little bit careful on the formulas. These are all hard coded numbers. In other words, they don't have any formulas in them as we can see. This one has a formula upwards, that's okay. So I could delete everything from here to here from B all the way to F, because I only want this column to make my pie chart from. Right click and delete. And then I don't need the total down here either. So the, the total, I'm gonna put my cursor here, 15 to 17, delete that. And the percent I don't need either, right click, delete that. So there's just my data that I want. Now I wanna sort the data by uh, the amount, top, highest to lowest. I could do this by selecting this whole thing or selecting this, for example, and then go into the data and make a filter. But I like to add a table. So I usually don't use the filters. I'm gonna select the whole thing, including the title, and then go to insert a table. That makes me feel a little bit more secure. It has a header on it, which is that first line. So I'll keep that ticked off. And then, okay, it's not mad, it's checked off. I should say, it's not ticked off, any case. So then I'm gonna go up top and now I've got my little filter items. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on the filter item and go from Z to A. So these are the people we owe money to, the most money to the least money. Now note there's kind of a lot of them this time. So if I make a pie chart using this whole thing, I might have too many categories. Therefore, I might wanna like, combine some of these bottom components to just one line. To see that more clearly though, let's first do it. Let's first add a, I'm gonna go to the table up top and add a total row. So now you got the total down below. All right, let's add a pie chart. So I'm gonna put my cursor on, let's just put my cursor on the data. From here, not including the total. I'm gonna insert and then I'll just, all I have to do is click on a pie chart and just boom, there it is. Now you got your different pie charts up top that you could select what kind of pie charts you want. So if you wanted something 
like this. You've got the ledger on it. So no matter what you do, it's a little squished together, right? So let's try, let's try uh, this one since we have more data on it. And then you could add other components that you need. So that's a quite a small pie chart when it looks like that. And that's because in part, we've got a whole lot of categories listed down here and I could remove the title. So I'll remove the title. So let's see what it would look like if I combine some of these. So let's say I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's stop it at seven and put everything else into other, including seven. Let's put seven and everything else into other. So I'm gonna select these. I've got 66986. Six, I'm gonna put that here. 669.86. Six, six. Gonna delete from nine to 14. Right click, delete. And so I should have the same total here as over here, 10, 291, 84, 10, 91, And so that then it's still an awfully small pie chart, but we can, that's not too bad. That looks pretty good. And then of course you could add more detail to it if, if you so choose. So let's just see what the other pie charts look like here, just for the fun of it. If I put my numbers back in there, they're still kind of squished together something like that but it's still a little squished so that one's not too bad something like that might be better you could use different formattings to pull the numbers out to the right you know to be above the pie chart for example if you still wanted to to remove a couple more you could squish you know th this one should be other but i could squish these two together nine one one eight six nine one one point eight six for example delete this one See if that looks a little bit nicer. So that might be a little nicer. And then maybe I want that pie chart on. This should be other. So there we have it. And then I might want that on another tab. So I'm gonna just put another tab. I can copy this and put it on another tab like that. I click off of it. And then I can, I can say I want the page layout maybe to be landscape. I can check out my how big it is on the page let's pull it out like to here now i can make it nice and huge so now i've got a giant pie chart which then i would want to change my my the font size here i can make a lot larger if i was to do that but i won't get into that right now so and then if i printed this out with everything else I can hide these tabs. I can select these tabs, right click and hide them. So that if I went all the way over, over here and then I tried to print this whole thing to a PDF file to save it on one PDF file, I can select the entire workbook and then scroll down. And when I get to the very end, it's not gonna show those data ones, right? It just shows this and then it doesn't, and my other graph. And then, so it does, it's not showing those data tabs is my point because we hid them. So now you've got this, you can work that into how you present your reports if you're doing presentation of reports. I'm gonna unhide these by putting my cursor here and then holding down shift. So I've got both those selected, right click and unhide. So I'll unhide uh, this one and here to here, right click and unhide. And so there we go. So now let's do one more on this one noting that we could do the same thing in terms of a bar graph and you could make you know a bar graph out of this too right you could take this and say what if i want to see it in an insert of a bar graph so you could do something like that but anytime you see a a data that that has a total on it you might just think, well, I can break that into a percentage of a pie chart type of graph. Anytime you've got a list of numbers that totals up at the bottom, you can you can say, well, this is a percent of the total. And the percent of the totals, by the way, are basically just taking, let's not put it right next to it. Let's put it like right here. They're basically just taking this, I'm gonna say uh, divided by this total F4 on that one. And I can copy that down, boom and then make and then that's 100 percent 
So those are the percentages. Let's make all these percentages. And we're gonna go here, make them percents. So that's basically, you know, what it's doing when you're when you're making a pie chart. So knowing when to make a pie chart versus a bar chart. I mean, you could do either. So don't feel like, you know, well, I chose the wrong one, but you know, they're just different pictorial representations and the bar chart you can use almost any time and the pie chart, therefore you might want to throw it in there when it's applicable. So you could make the other bar chart that we looked at last time, which was, we can break this out between uh, current, we could say current, I'm just going to rearrange the headers, current 30 to 1 to 30, we could say uh, 31 to 60, we could take then 61 to 90, we can take the older, and then we can add the data, which is going to be here. I'm doing this fairly quickly just, just to show you this is another format. We can make charts out of just about everything. Now hold on a second here. I'm missing a category. Oh, the other one's the total. Hold on a second. No, that's right. That's right. What are you tripping on, man? You're tripping. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so now I could just take that data and I can insert, say, a, let's do a, a bar chart here. So now we can do a bar chart for that one, giving us, giving us uh, that data. You could make that into a pie chart too, right? You could, you could sum it up and these this are the percent that's one to 30 or one to, you know, but in any case, there, there's that one. So, and like I say, once you have these set up, you can format them a lot. You have a lot more options for the formatting in Excel. If you export all your stuff to an Excel sheet and then put it together so that you can make one big report, possibly quarterly, then you can hide your data tabs and just show the actual graphs that you want to be including in your reports. So Excel gives you some nice flexibility to be able to create PDF files from from the data that you're exporting here. So pretty nice tool. So I'm going to call this, this is the AP graph. So maybe we'll do a couple more on the sales side of this graph stuff.